All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the GSL, the Global Star League Super Tournament. Every morning we come here, and uh, the tournament, like we were talking about yesterday, rips off its jacket, shirt, and runs into the KTLA phone booth and uh, changes into a super tournament. And uh, as a and result, it gets so much more epic. As a result, you guys get to see some awesome games. Even in the round of 64, there hasn't really been maybe one or two, but there have not been many matches thus far in the entire round of 64 that have not been really fun to watch. Exactly. There have been there haven't really been that many. Oh, pff, you know, knockout. Oh, he's you know that much better than the other guy. And even some games like uh, Creator Prime versus yeah. MVP. That was the game that everyone was like, oh, this is going to be a joke. I don't want to watch. And then it was like. MVP almost lost. <laughs> so that was cool. Um, well, up next we got Revival versus Ensnare, TSL versus OGS. So, yeah. Who do you think is going to take this match, Moltrap? I don't know. I don't know. See, the thing is, is uh, Revival. I, I think Ensnare is probably the favorite. I think he's probably the favorite. Um, in my opinion, as well. He's well. I mean, he's been. He's actually been in GSL. You know, he's been in Code S. Um, and Revival's a pretty new player. He's only barely been in Code A a little bit. He got eliminated in the round of 16 of Code A. Sorry, the round of 32 of Code A last season. So he doesn't really have that much experience. And we're going to get a shot of our players here in just a moment. There he is, GSL Revival. Uh, oh, he actually did. I forgot. He did. Yeah, he got to the round of 16. And uh, he got eliminated, though. He's going to. Yeah, he got to the round of 16 the, the previous season, and they got eliminated in round 32 last season, so unfortunately not even in Code A next season, but uh, I kind of like, you know, he he played, if I remember correctly, against Keen, let me double check that, no, it was Ryung, um, and he had some really cool stuff going on, he played T ZVT differently than anyone else did, and so in Snare, you know, he's not really the best Terran, I could see him getting caught off guard by something interesting from this new and relatively unknown player. I agree. I think that's, uh, you know, you can't count him out by any means. And of course, yeah. here's Ensnare, who's got beautiful results, Code S player, and he's been in the GSL since its inception, was in the Open Tournament. The first Open Tournament made it to the round of four, I believe, and I don't think that's shown up there, but he's done well yep. ever since the GSL started. Yeah, as so. you can see, he hasn't really gotten too far, though, and that's why I say, like, eh, he's, he's good, but he's not the best. Right, he's a um, consistent player, but not... Not one of those best players in the world players. Yeah, exactly. Um, he does do very well against Zerg, though. He's actually 68% win rate against Zerg, 11 and 5 overall uh, in his history. Of course, as you can see on the screen, 4 and 2 lately. Um, actually, and, he's, and that's not counting uh, 8 wins and 0 losses in 4 tournaments, including versus oh, Zerg. Look Whoa. at his haircut. Whoa, haircut. I didn't even recognize him. I was like, who's that in the booth? Wow. All right, and Snare getting the haircut, yeah. making sure he's totally streamlined for this game. Yeah, he <laughs> doesn't want to have any wind drag. It, he Is he that read the term for that wind drag. Uh, I don't know anything about aerodynamics, bull trap. You gotta help me out. Uh, I, you know, if you hadn't <laughs> said wind drag, I probably could remember what the uh, something. Anyway, um, <laughs> he saw the sign out front. There's a big 50 foot by 50 foot sign on the front that says it's your time to fly, GSL. And he saw that and he's like, oh man, I'm not aerodynamic enough. Exactly. That must have been his, <laughs> that must have been what forced the decision for him. Exactly. Uh, the first map is going to be on Middleopolis. As you can see, both players eliminating a couple maps. Uh, Revival, thumb down Zelnok of Fortress, which is interesting. Because I believe that is the game, one of the games he lost against Ryung was on Zelnok of Fortress. That's kind of funny. And uh, dual site eliminated by and snare. That's, those are both new maps. I think maybe both the players just kind of don't feel as comfortable on them. That might be one reason why. By the way, the first game is going to be on Metalopolis. These two players look extremely focused. We'll see who takes this first game. It's awesome. TBC. TBC. And here is our Zerg player at the right side of Metalopolis. 
He is eliminated from Code A, but now in the Super Tournament, he's trying to attempt a... TSN Revival. That was of, so clever. Of his career. <laughs> that was so clever. Thank you. And Revival's trying to get away with the win, but will he be slowed down by... A spell from StarCraft 1? Ojesu in Snail. Very clever. Thank you. I like your, I'm proud I like of those. your intros today. I'm proud of those. Um, in <laughs> Snare, Kim Sung Chu or Chiu, something like that. Um, Revival, by the way, just in case you guys are wondering, used to be known as TSL Pretty yeah. and TSL Posh. I didn't know about the Posh. That <laughs> may have been his favorite Spice Girl. That's pretty funny. I, I remember something about a Spice Girl character type person in being in uh, TSL, but I'd really firm that up. By the way, thanks to LG Intel and G-Skill sponsoring this wonderful tournament. It was actually Baby Spice. She went pro StarCraft 2 for a little bit. Oh, really? No, not really. <laughs> I thought you were actually being serious for a second. I was like, she actually played StarCraft 2? <laughs> we said it in such a serious voice that I didn't know if you, if you meant that she actually played. I mean, I knew so. she wasn't actually a pro. I would have heard about her. I know about all the pros. <laughs> Not necessarily the, the girl pros, you know, the girls that, that do well in StarCraft 2 and then everyone calls them pros even though they're not that good. And yeah. I you don't want to give my opinion on that because there's a huge controversy on the internet about it. People are going to get mad. <laughs> you know, I actually have that problem a lot that I make, like, you know, straight man jokes. I make jokes where you, like, say it deadpan and that's why it's funny. But I say it so deadpan that people don't realize that it's a joke and it causes issues sometimes. And I have to be like, no, I was joking. So you're giving me some factual information, Mole Trap. How am I going to be able to rely on you to keep making <laughs> jokes and serious voices? I'm sorry. Did you know that one of the Spice Girls married a uh, soccer pro? I didn't know that. But I wanted to mention that Ensnare is getting a really fast command center off of yeah. just one barracks. And, and uh, hold that thought, though. Some drones coming out to chase the Marines back from the Overlord. Looks like he's going to save the Overlord for the moment, but he's at risk of losing a drone now. And, um... Wow, actually just going to fall those drones back. Zerglings are out. Overlord, looks like it's going to survive the day. It's actually a really cool build by Ensnare. He went for a gasless expand off of just one barracks and scared his opponent. Really, you know, brought some, brought an SCV, brought two Marines, and then Revival just didn't know what to expect. Pulled a lot of drones, lost a lot of mining time, and now the, the expansion is going to be up. Bunker nearly complete. So Ensnare putting himself into quite a lead here at the beginning, I would say. Yeah, he's going to have his Econ going really strong pretty quickly. Now, is Revival going to figure this out and put some pressure on? Because right now, he technically doesn't have a lot of Marines. Um, at the very least, he's going to be able to drone up now that he realizes that Ensnare is going to just kind of be chilling in his base for a little bit. Yeah, and another thing to know is that Snare Bull is commencing on the low ground, so he is immediately mined for that, not hiding, not keeping his base for a while. And that Zergling, did that Zergling actually see the command center? No, did not no, see the didn't. command center. Didn't even see the bunker at the front. Oh man, now if he blocks the second one, it is going to be really bad for Revival. Uh, Revival, those Marines were there the last time. They're still there, buddy. <laughs> um, he is going to get forced back there, and a factory going up for Ensnare, and I believe he's making a reactor there. He might switch over and get some Hellions out. This is a really nice follow-up, because the only way he can put pressure on him is like, oh, you've got no defenses, I'll make a bunch of Zerglings. So if you get a few Hellions out, you can uh, deal with that. Yeah, it's a smart choice. Did get that double gas immediately after making the command center, so he was able to get those Hellions out very quickly. And still, right now, Revival completely in the dark. Has not seen the command center. He saw the Marines blocking, so that's a good tell that there's a command center there, but he doesn't know for sure. And that's always a really scary situation to be in as a Zerg. Zerg players really rely on that scouting information to make most of their decisions. Don't usually make blind choices. Because you can lose really easily as Zerg if you make blind choices. And Zergly is going to run in here now, though, and see everything, including the Hellions. Yep, that was a good, good scout and Ling. Is not going to catch sight of this Starport, of course. He's going to go into Banshees as well, since uh, Zerglings do not have jetpacks like Reapers. Yeah, so he's going to follow up with Banshees. So, and Snare going heavy on. This is going to be interesting. I wonder if we're going to see, like, a dual harassment with, like, the Hellions on one side and the Banshee on the other. And he's getting Cloak as well. So, that's really interesting. Yeah, that's actually almost too much of an investment. A lot of times Zerg players will expect to see Banshees after Hellions. The 
It looks like an Overlord is going to be taken out here, but some Zerglings are going to come try to catch those Hellions. Oh, nope, looks like the Overlord is going to go down. Try to save it. Yeah, he's, uh, and it's a good move for him to keep him. Actually, he's evacuated the Zerglings altogether, so they're not even going to try and help out this hatchery at all. Yeah, it's going to take a million years for those Hellions to kill the hatchery. Lair is going up. Plus one melee attack on the way as yeah. well for revival. That hatch wants to kill those those Hellions. Sorry to cut you off. He wants to kill those Hellions so bad, just can't catch them. Yeah, that hatchery is like the dinosaurs, and the Zerglings are, I don't know what they would be, evolution. Yeah. <laughs> so it takes them a million years to kill them off. Exactly. I don't know. Um, but uh, it looks Let's like he might be going there. for roaches, which are the meteor that covers the world in ash of StarCraft II. Could easily take out those Hellions, but there's a lot of them there, and they're pushing in. Doing some harassment, they are going to get pushed back, and there goes the extinction of that particular Hellion. Yeah, he's uh, he's like the Yucatan Peninsula. <laughs> now remember, all of this is just theory. Nobody really knows what happened <laughs> to the dinosaurs. That's right. Nobody <laughs> really knows. Um. Well, so one of them got a time machine and saw that TV show Barney, and he was like, oh my god, this is what's going to come with dinosaurs. I'm just going to kill myself now. <laughs> That's truly the reason why dinosaurs left the earth they got time machines and they found out about barney now this banshee is going to come in and start to get some kills i don't see an overseer anywhere so he's going to get several drone kills before Second anything is going to happen well. i don't know he should maybe target down those queens but it looks like he just wants to get as many drones as possible yeah and the sport claws are already going up so yeah targeting the drones is a much better choice there is one overseer oh, the overseer can't be oh he made two overseers so he's actually going to be able to see both of them but the banshee just getting so many kills not attacking it right away with that queen one Banshee up to six kills, the other one sitting at seven. Wow, and he's actually, um, yep, so his core collar goes up in the natural, not in the main. He actually had a chance where the Overseer wasn't there to hit some more drones in the main. Didn't take that opportunity, but still doing a decent amount of damage. I see eight kills and seven kills on those Banshees, is that what I'm reading yeah, correctly? Yeah, 15 kills total between the two of them. And that gives him map control as well. Yeah, he's actually got Banshees. The, he's made one more Banshee. He's still seeing the Banshees he had around to kill off creep tumors that are being made, Zerglings around the map as well. And right now, Ensnare has already transitioned back at home, started making Siege Tanks, has made a third command center. So he's just kind of planning on getting his Siege Tank count up and playing that very normal Ooh. TBC style. And do you see the direction that command center is flying? Do. He is going for the gold. Ensnare is going to try and take that high yield minerals in the middle of the map, and it's a little bit more vulnerable, but right now he has like super duper map control with the Hellions and the Banshees, so he can easily take that. In fact, with the Banshees in part of his, as part of his army, it's going to make it very difficult for uh, Revival to want to engage with those Roaches against the Tank Marine Hellion army, and here they come! They also lose a Hellion, uh... but the Tanks are siege! Oh, that, la that volley just at the extent of the range does a lot of damage. He's got, um... Banelings coming out as well, so that could actually do pretty well. The Banelings, Banelings are actually pretty good against Hellions as well as Marines, so and only three tanks out, so if the Roaches tank the damage and the Hellions, um, Banelings get in there, well, they could do some, uh, some hurt. Yeah, so the Speedlings get behind the Hellions as well somehow, and Banelings hit them. Banelings do quite well against Hellions as long as they can hit them. Yeah, so that, that is uh, the key to Banelings. That's the stipulation. Success. <laughs> so... It's there, has made that gold base into a planetary, just now finished up. He's actually going to be switching his starport to a reactor, start getting more medevacs out. In fact, like he was a... trying to do a drop, was deflected. Yeah, a good choice. And that's because Revival has overlords all over the map, spotting every single place of the drop. I don't know how well you guys can see on the mini map. A little bit of banshee yeah, harassment that. here, trying to pick off some of those banelings. Uh oh, really losing. smart. Revival not even pulling them away. Wow, targeting down the banelings. Popping them, he needs to get those out of there. There's a drop He's in the main. at the top as well, which is going to get cleaned up pretty quickly. Uh, there's that banshee. He's actually going to take out a queen. No, the queen gets away with just a few hit points left. Back to the safety of the spore crawler. But uh, these banshees, this like late banshee harass is really doing a lot. Now mutalisks are coming out, so that those banshees are going to be pretty much shut down. But a decent push coming down the left. That really shows the snare's knowledge of timing. Knows how long you can push the Banshees, use drops before the views are out. Now he's going to push forward here and try to pressure the third base.